Well, guys, it's like 20 after 9. It's crazy how much daylight we've lost now. I haven't been paying attention because I haven't been out here by the fire too much for obvious reasons, but I like it getting dark at this time. 9 o'clock, 8.30, that's great. It sucks when you got to wait till 10 o'clock before it's even mostly dark. Makes doing this a lot harder. So we're just going to I'm just going to hang out by the fire. I don't have anybody. Carl doesn't even know I'm having a fire. Tracy's aware, but I don't know if she's going to come out. But all I really need is right there. Oh, Mr. Wizzy Wizzy. My bonfire buddy. <laughs> and Gizmo, too. Gizmo was out here. I went out by the garage to get some firewood left gizmo out running around and i came back and he was sitting right here by the fire waiting for me like what a good gizmo never thought a chihuahua could be that good i know they are loyal dogs but he's extremely loyal that's awesome so we're gonna hang out here tonight see this is what wizzy does <laughs> he's got to be with me Good boy, Mr. Wizzy. God, I'm going to miss this guy. I miss Onyx, too, guys, horribly. That's such a shitty thing, man. Here, one minute and two hours. Well, I want to say four or five hours later, he was gone with no indication there was anything wrong. That's what made it worse. There was nothing we could do to help him. I guess that's when their time's up, their time's up. Very, very sad. All right, I shall return. All right, guys. Finally, I've been able to sit down and stop my scatterbrain, chemo brain. Really causing me issues. Short-term memory things. It's fried. We just spent a half an hour looking for my phone after I flew the drone I'm using my old phone for the drone because you can monitor what the drone is recording so the old phone works better it fits in the holder better and all that kind of crap <clears throat> excuse me well I had my new phone with me just to make like an intro because that phone takes really really good video so anyways I came in we did our thing stuff so I'm like well, by the way, where the hell's my phone? We're looking and thinking and looking, and I finally thought, and Tracy was already on her way out to where I flew the drone, where I launched from. Well, that's where I left it. I left the freaking, the extra drone battery, the other drone, and my phone laying out there in the freaking grass. Could not remember where it was. Like, oh my God, it's just causing me so much, so much aggravation walking out to the garage or walking into the house. Why did I go in the house? And completely forgetting why I went in or forgetting one of the two things I might have, I don't know, it's just, it's pissing me off and it's very hard to live with, live with this. Uh, so, but we did get some good news today. My uh, next door neighbor here, Melissa, I know you guys know that Todd used to own it and he sold it back to his ex-wife. And she's obviously aware of my situation too, and I think I mentioned to you guys that she had said something about having a, a Ford F-150 truck a couple weeks ago. And she came over today, she came up, and she came over and talked to me. She said, well, we're gonna, she goes, we know you guys really, really need a vehicle. She goes, we're just decided to pretty much give you the vehicle, we'll sell it to you for a dollar. And uh, she said, but it's been a minute since it's been on the road don't know really for sure what it all needs I know being a 98 Ford that particular design on the front brakes is not good if they're not used they get corroded and seize up so it probably minimal is going to need front brake work but I don't know how long it's been parked I don't know how many miles are on it I don't know how rusty it is and and, uh, and obviously I appreciate the offer but it's the worst vehicle you could have almost living up here it's a two-wheel drive straight six-cylinder 
stick shift. Well, Tracy can't drive a stick shift, unfortunately. We've been together 25 years, guys. I tried, as you can imagine, many times. She just overthinks it. She just cannot grasp the concept of how to do it. I know it sounds ridiculous, but if you were to watch her try to do it, you might understand a little better, but there's not... And Melissa's like, well, I can teach her, I can teach her. I'm like, oh, I'll let you. I'll certainly let you try, because I sure the hell did. And she still don't know how to drive a stick. So, But anyways, it's a vehicle. The only bad thing is it's in Grand Rapids, about an hour and a half from here. So I don't know what it's going to take to get it here. Um, my neighbor Chuck's got a tow dolly, but it's not a big enough dolly to put a truck on, unfortunately. You know, to pay a tow truck to come and get it, they probably want, what, $50 to $100 just to hook up to it. And then, what, 2 to $4 a mile? I, mean, I have no idea what they charge these days for tows. So, But obviously, you know, I even told her, I said, thanked her profusely, and I'm like, but it's kind of the worst vehicle for us because Tracy can't drive a stick. I said, would you have a problem if you give it to me and I were to fix it and make it a viable, good vehicle if I were to turn around and sell it and use that money to get something that Tracy can drive? Because that's our concern is having Tracy have something to be able to drive to work every day. And if she can't drive a stick shift, well, the truck doesn't help a whole lot. So, but it's a fantastic, you know, very much appreciated offer. No doubt about that. So we'll let you know how that goes. Um, don't know if, it's, if it will be worth getting in here. I don't know how many miles, if it's rusty. I don't know if it's been parked a year or five years. I just don't know. But we're going to certainly pursue it. Probably end up having to take a trip to Grand Rapids. Is probably what I'm going to have to do. And see if we can get it running. And moving and whatnot. So, but at least something good finally happened. And I got to fly the drone today. I got some really good video, but I screwed up and I forgot to hit record on part of it. So I got, I think I got about three or four minutes of some pretty decent footage. I went up higher than I have. And I didn't freak out. I just let the drone do its thing. When the battery goes low on the drone, it starts beeping, beep, 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 and it lets you know, yeah, the battery's dead, I'm coming home. So it'll automatically go back to where it launched from, which is really awesome. So I didn't freak, I just let it do its thing today, and it landed within about 8 or 10 feet of where it took off. And that's so, that's so incredible, because I was, I don't know, 75 to 100 feet in the air, I was two cabins over from us. And it came back all by itself and landed pretty much where it took off from. So, and I do believe I got some cool footage. So, but more practice, more practice. I'll get some, hopefully, some really good fall color pictures and video. And, uh, I don't believe I can get. If you're not making money off of your drone videos, I don't believe there's anything wrong with posting drone videos. It's when you're in the it's when you're making money with them is where the problem lies. So if I put my videos up without putting commercials on them, I'll be all right, I believe. And uh, I don't think they're going to come and arrest somebody on their first offense. I would have to imagine they would warn you. So we'll see. We'll see. What a gorgeous night, guys. It's like... I can't even tell you how warm it is. It feels like it's, I would still say 75 or more. Uh, let's see. I don't know, but it's very warm. Tank top warm. Shorts warm. So I'm going to try to stick it out tonight. Something's got to happen, guys. One of these days, something is going to happen. I still am positive. As much as everything else in my life has been negative lately, I still have that positive vibe that something's going to happen like that. And it could be happening every night, but if it's happening after midnight, I'm not hearing it generally. So something really bizarre happened, too, the other night, though. I didn't even tell you guys about this because I haven't really done a video. 
it was like three nights ago, my neighbor Chuck and Vicky's son is here, or was, but anyways, he was here that night, and Vicky and Matt heard something outside, and it was loud enough that they got a flashlight, and they went outside and they were looking around to try to figure out what was making all the racket outside. Well, I didn't hear anything. It turns out this was like, I stayed up till 1 o'clock that night. Well, this happened around 2 o'clock. And the next morning, in fact, I actually have a picture on my phone, a short video. My ladder that was up against the garage, and it was probably about 5 feet from the end of the garage, leaning up against the roof of the garage, was moved over. It was like the base, the legs of the ladder would have been about five feet away from the garage it was tipped over away from the garage and it was down about four foot from where it was leaning against the garage so somehow it got moved away from the garage and moved down away from the garage what the hell moved the ladder sure wasn't no raccoon bear maybe i don't know my camera are really not recording i only have two of them hooked up to record right now i really should probably fix that but yeah, really, really, that was bizarre. Just strange. We have no idea what caused that. In fact, I might be able to show you if I can find it quickly. Ah, never finding anything quickly when you want to. I got so much crap on my phone. I don't know if I can find it. That's drone. That's drone. Is that it? Yes. Uh, I do have it. Let me see if I can get this started over for you guys. But this is. Come on. That's not it. This is it. If you can see it, there's my ladder way over there from that's where it was. Leaning right there. Somehow it ended up way over there. Now what the hell moved my ladder, right? something move that ladder really bizarre I have no explanation for that this sweet little angel dog guys she doing her whiny sounds she always makes and uh, let her out let her come outside and go potty she's still really really good for a 14 year old dog of holding it and not having accidents in the house. But anyways, so I figured I'll just let her come outside with me. And so she went over and did her potty. And now look at her. She's like, ah, I am just happy. Just happy to be sitting outside with Daddy and the cat. <laughs> Gotta be so weird for her, though. You know, she can't hear anything, right? So sitting here is like sitting in absolute silence but she can still see she can definitely still see pretty darn good but what do you do you know if I leave her if I go over there and sit down and ignore her next thing I'll probably hear a splash in the river or something you know her falling in or she might just lay down here and not even move I don't know I don't really want to make her go in though if she doesn't have to gotta hear at least a coyote or something or a pudge I hear a pudge you guys hear a pudge I certainly hear a pudge and that's her happy place I've never had a dog that rolled so much in my life Happy, happy, happy. We're going to have to take her to poles, though. This little gimp she's got is... It's not getting any better. We're not finding anything wrong with her. 
toenail or nothing in between the pads of her feet or anything like that. So I seriously think though, if she got over whatever's hurting her foot, she would run because she will at times sprint like from where she's at to over there, like 10, 15 feet, which is really cute as hell to watch. It just sucks seeing her gimping like this and then she'll walk <clears throat> most every day now she'll go out to the garage with me and I end up having to carry her back because I don't really want her to push it and hurt herself worse what you think you feel silly talking to the dog you know damn well can't hear you Where are you going? All right, I guess she wants to go in now. All right, guys, I'll be back. All righty, guys, it is 20 to 11. Thought I'd do a cancer health update. Haven't talked about that much at all. As it stands right now, I'm still in the getting over the chemo brain thing which has definitely improved a lot still struggling like I was talking about earlier probably this might be as good as I get I don't know but it's now up to me when I want to start the 280 milligrams of the whatever that pill is called I never get the name right so I'm not gonna try <clears throat> but it's up to me to do it I'm gonna do it because I gotta just do it for five days five days on 25 off roughly we'll see how the five days goes that's all i can do i'm not gonna say no i'm not gonna do it because it might well it might not do anything so but that's for six months so that's kind of in my beanie brain buying me another six months i guess and the bad thing about this is though this though is they told me that if they were to do an image of whatever kind of imaging they would do, that it would basically, the tumor would look the same. That it really would likely not show any difference in size due to the fact the treatment causes swelling, which is causing my lack of coordination and unsteadiness and things like that. So... Basically, the image would look the same as it did in the beginning. And I'm like, that really didn't set well with me because it's like, well, the point I thought of this treatment was to shrink the tumor as best you could. If you're maintaining it, if that's all you're doing is maintaining its size and keeping it from growing, well, you're fighting a losing battle in my mind. So, but like I said, it's up to me when I want to start taking the pill again. It doesn't have to be a Monday. It doesn't have to be a Sunday or Saturday, whatever. It can be any, you know, five-day period. They just wanted me to do it where it would be obviously easier to remember. So Monday through Friday was my thinking. I don't know if I'm going to start it this Monday or not. I should. I really should because I'm three weeks in the, or I'm two weeks past the second time that I was supposed to start taking it again. So... I don't know, it's just, it's weighing heavily on me because this was all start. you know, this all started in May, and now we're headed to September, time matters now, in the beginning I could just ignore it a little bit or brush it off, I didn't have to pay so much attention to it, and you know, I was actually fortunate enough today to, I was able to buy more insurance, knowing full well that I have brain cancer, it's not cheap, but it's going to help Tracy out a hell of a lot. And it's the adult thing to do. <laughs> Definitely. And I felt better for having done it. When we were finally done, it was, I was on the phone for a good hour. It wasn't a cold call. It was something I had talked to somebody about a while ago. But, you know, everything you can do helps. So, we did it. 
and we both agreed on it. We both thought it was a good thing. I didn't just up and do it without Tracy, Tracy's input. Not an easy thing to do, but it's a reality. It's a harsh reality. It does me no good to ignore it and pretend it doesn't exist. Oh, but there you are. That's all. And as far as I know, that's they're going to have me... Well, actually, when I start taking that pill again, then I guess i got to go once a week and get blood to monitor my blood levels. i got to start taking the stupid antibiotic again three days a week and all that crap so that's where I'll be but I'll certainly not let you guys know if I start taking it I just I just don't think it's going to be this Monday I don't know and and a little part of me still thinks why bother I don't know you're fighting something that you can't win and how hard am I going to fight Especially knowing what I know now that they can't even tell me that they gained anything or I lost anything or I even maintained. They can't make a prognosis. No one's ever said you have eh, possibly to live, you know. I don't know that I'd want to know if they did know. But I don't know. From what I'm reading, I'm, I, I had to face facts. I can't keep ignoring what this does how it affects you, apparently it can act just like Alzheimer's, which that's scary as hell. And I can already feel me losing myself because everything I ever did in my life was all brain power, mechanics, construction, you know, using my brain, using my hands, and it's taking those two things, very things away from me, my coordination, my thought process, my math, I was so sharp at, at math, and now I'm struggling at times to do simple math, it's becoming, for me, the only good part of the day is sleep, because the only safe place anymore. Well, I just thought I'd share that update with you guys, and I'd certainly share anything new that might pop up. So there's Angel's separation anxiety, guys. And a little bit of gizmo, too? Or is it all her? You can hear gizmo barking. But like I said, she was taken to a shelter, and that's where Art got her, and then he was never away from that dog, so, and now that he's disappeared, she's probably like, you guys aren't going to go anywhere, are you? True. All right, well, I'm going to go in and try to <laughs> calm yeah, beast. She was good till Tracy came out here, oh, so Lord. she's got to, got to be with somebody all the time, it seems. <laughs> Man, time is going by quick tonight. It's already 11.30. I did not fall asleep either, sitting here. <laughs> I don't know. It's just so gorgeous. I heard one knock. One knock that I could not judge the direction it came from. I can't tell direction with these headphones and that microphone, but... I'm going to tough it out. I'm not even really tired at the moment, so. I got Missy Kitty, a little bit, Wizzy, and Gizmo. And Casey's hanging out next door, so. I'm certainly not alone. But isn't that little angel a trip, guys? She doesn't do that all the time, but sometimes she just does not want to be left alone. That was one of those times sucks sometimes for me in the morning because not often am I in bed when Tracy leaves work usually I'm up but sometimes I am in bed and Tracy will leave for work and she'll start that crap as soon as Tracy walks out the door so guess who gets woke up 
Uh, that's the only that's my only complaint about the little dog. And she is loud. Oh my god, when she gets going, she's the loudest dog we have by far. But that's what we signed up for. I would not kick her to the curb now. Now that she's quite happy here. I shall return. Well, guys, I made it to midnight. This is so bizarre. Any of you guys that followed me for a while know all the weird things I used to hear. The knocks, the grunts, the whatever. Just all kinds of strange little things. Silence tonight. I heard raccoon chatter like three times. That was it. No owls. No knocks. No nothing. Really, really strange. I, mean, I had such high hopes. I just had a feeling tonight that something good would happen for once. Just still keep holding out that hope, you know. It's happened before. Why can't it happen again? But yeah, it's just unbelievably quiet. Certainly enjoying the sound of the summer, but I wouldn't mind get this, getting this crap scared out of me, honestly. I know that probably sounds insane to say, but I got lots and lots and lots of hours into this now without anything to show for it. And I will probably head in in a couple minutes here. Leave the microphone out for another hour or so. But I am starting to get tired. But I always, as always, appreciate you guys hanging with me. Hopefully I talked about enough to keep it interesting for you. And we will talk to you on the next one. Thanks for hanging with me tonight.